Hello everyone. Uh, this is our second video on inferential statistics. Now in this video, we continue our discussion on confidence interval. Now previously we learned that if population variance is known and n is sufficiently large or population is normally distributed, then under 1 minus alpha percentage confidence interval for population mean is given by this. Here x bar is the mean of a random sample and z alpha by 2 is the z value leaving an area alpha by 2 to the right. That is, if I consider z distribution, which is shown in the picture, and this point is uh, z alpha by 2, this leaves an area alpha by 2 to the right. And due to symmetry, minus z alpha by 2 leaves an area alpha by 2 to the left. Thus, area between these two points is 1 minus alpha. Uh, in this video, we understand confidence interval on the population mean when a variance is unknown. Okay, let us consider the case when variance is unknown. Let x bar be random variable of a sample mean and let s be the standard deviation of random sample. Then the random variable t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by s upon root n is called t random variable and this assumes t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom where n is a size of a random sample for completeness let me define a t probability density function or t distribution function. t distribution function is defined by this. Here k is number of degree of freedom and the mean of this distribution is 0 and variance is k upon k minus 2. And this function is called gamma function and gamma function is a generalization of vectorial function which is defined by this. Gamma of uh, any uh, real number is equal to it's an integration from 0 to infinity to the power of minus t and t to the power of uh, x minus 1 dt. Uh, this is how we define gamma function. Okay, the graph is interesting. You can see the picture of a uh, probability density function of uh, t distribution. Uh, the graph is uh, almost similar to normal distribution. This is unimodal symmetric with respect to the mean that is mean is 0 in this case as well. The only difference between this and normal distribution is this tail. Tail is heavier in this t, t distribution. But as uh, k increases, that is number of uh, degree of freedom increases, this approaches normal distribution. Okay. Thus, we can say that if uh, n becomes larger and larger, and if population distribution is not skewed too much, then uh, the random variable this approximates normal distribution. That is, t distribution approximates normal distribution. Uh, let's consider the confidence interval of for mean. The confidence interval for mean is defined by this. Now we define under 1 minus alpha percentage confidence interval for mean. Particularly when sigma square is unknown and we assume that n is uh, not large enough. We assume that n is lesser than 30 in this case. Confidence interval is this x bar minus t alpha by 2 comma n minus 1. S divided by root n less than or equal to mu less than or equal to x bar plus t alpha by 2 comma n minus 1 s divided by root n. Here uh, this is a t value uh, which leaves an area alpha by 2 to the right. The distribution of uh, this t random variable is as n minus 1 degree of freedom. That is, uh, if I consider the picture of uh, t distribution 
and this is same as a normal distribution if this is a t value now assume that degree of uh, freedom of this distribution is n minus 1 and this leaves an area alpha by 2 to the right and also this is symmetric and due to symmetry minus t alpha by 2 n minus 1 leaves an area alpha by 2 to the left same as a uh, normal distribution as i stated earlier okay and this is a confidence interval please do remember this remember whenever uh, variance is unknown and sample size is uh, small if sample size is very very large assume that then uh, i can replace this uh, t value by z value okay now let us consider the case uh, where sample size is uh, large enough okay now before that let me define even one-sided t confidence bound the under one minus alpha percentage upper confidence bound for mean is given by this and lower confidence bound is given by this as before here we consider t alpha instead of t alpha by 2 and this leaves an area alpha to the right okay as i said uh, let us consider uh, the large confidence okay large sample confidence interval for mean when sigma square is known when uh, n is sufficiently large okay in this case let us assume that n is greater than uh, 40 okay it's large enough if it is sufficiently large and population distribution is not skewed then the random variable x bar minus mu divided by uh, s upon root n this random variable approximates normal distribution and this random variable is called uh, uh, z random variable or z random variable this approximates normal distribution and we don't mention uh, degree of freedom as i mentioned uh, earlier in t distribution if degree of freedom increases t distribution approaches normal distribution that is if degree of freedom is infinity t distribution is same as normal distribution and uh, 100 1 minus alpha percentage confidence interval for mean which satisfies this condition is uh, given by this x bar minus we just replace this t value by z value z alpha by 2 s upon 210 lesser than mu lesser than x bar plus z alpha by 2 s upon 210 when population standard deviation is known now we use population standard deviation instead of uh, sample standard standard deviation we already discussed this in the first video okay and one-sided confidence bound of mu when uh, sample size is large is given by this and this this is uh, the first one is upper confidence bound and second one is lower confidence bound okay let's consider one example uh, read this example and check uh, and check which confidence interval you need to consider in this case you need to assume a t random variable or z random variable the contents uh, of seven similar containers of sulfuric acid are given okay here yeah, the sample size is seven the sample size is uh, small thus the corresponding random variable will be t random variable we use t distribution instead of z distribution remember that and we have to find 95 percent confidence interval for the mean uh, mean content of all uh, such containers assume an approximately normal distribution okay uh the saying that population assumes a normal distribution and sample sizes are small enough if that is the case we can use a t distribution to find confidence interval okay uh, for this we need to find mean as well as a uh, standard deviation of sample let's find this sample size is 7 and mean is given by a sigma xi divided by n x size or observations uh, in sample 
in this case it is a 10.2 10.4 9.8 10 10.2 and 9.6 if i write this explicitly uh, we get this 9.6 the whole thing divided by 7 and this is equal to 10 you can verify this and standard deviation first we find variance variance is a uh, average of square of deviations right oh not average in this case we have to divide this by uh, n minus 1 n minus 1 is nothing but degree of freedom and this is uh, approximately uh, 0 0.283 you can verify this as well oh not 0 0.283 now this is uh, 0 0.08 and thus s is equal to square root of 0 0.08 which is equal to 0 0.283 uh, thus 95 percentage confidence interval of mu is given by x bar minus 95 percentage that is alpha in this case is 0 0.05 thus alpha by 2 is 0 0.025 and degree of freedom here is uh, 6 because number of uh, sample uh, in the uh, num okay size of sample is 7 so this becomes 6 mm, s upon uh, root n lesser than uh, mu less than uh, x bar plus t 0 0.025 comma 6 support root n. okay for this we need to find uh, t 0 0.025 comma 6 okay uh, let's see the table this is a t distribution table i think uh, it's visible and degree of freedom is given in this column it has a uh, uh, see it is 6 right degree of freedom is 6 and we need to find a t value when alpha by 2 is 0 0.025 that, that is 2.447 that's okay let's sub substitute this and this value is a 2 point okay let me write it here t 0 0.025 comma 6 this is equal to 2.447 Thus, uh, this is x we already found as 10 minus 2.447 and uh, s is uh, 0 0.283 n is 7 therefore this is root 7 minus mu less than 10 plus 2.447 0 0.283 divided by root 7 if I simplify this number is a 9.74 and upper bound is a 10.26 as we can say that mu lie between these two numbers uh, this is confidence interval okay that's it in next session we discuss a confidence interval for the proportion variance and ratios of variance thank you